Hello YouTube and welcome to Groundworks. Today's series of Kerbal Engineering, we are continuing on how to build a space station a mini-series. This is episode 3 and in previous episode we have designed a complete uh, station in the VAB and disassemble it to the launchable components and balance them. Today we are building launchers for those components. And as you can see, we are starting with the station core top. So I am actually looking for the top module. And this whole series or this whole episode will be two and a half times times accelerated. I mean, because most of it is basic KSP construction, nothing out of the ordinary. So the goal for today is for each of those components that we have broken apart, create a launcher and then launch test it. So not only to build it, but to test it to see that it will launch properly and it will launch into the correct orbit and that it has enough delta V for the rendezvous until, well, until we're supposed to um, meet up and then assemble it in the orbit. So uh, as you can see, just slapping the fairing on it and putting some stabilizing fins and pretty much that's it. I don't want the rocket to be more complex than that. 4.3 thousand delta V, that's okay, I guess. It's not stellar. I would prefer it to be around 5-ish, but I think I can take it as is. So, let's see. Um, okay, I'm thinking about attaching some side boosters, actually. Uh, just to give it some del extra delta V and also to maybe, you know, make it look a little bit cooler and I'm, I'm trying to rise it towards 4.9 or maybe 5,000 delta V, roughly. But at 4.7 I won't be too disappointed, so. Okay. 4.872, I'm good enough. I'm happy enough with that. And then we have SRB nose cones. Just making sure that they are properly put into staging. We want to be pressing so that they disconnect at the time when we are, when we disconnect the launchers. I just want to make sure where are they thrusting. Ah, okay, good. I want to be thrusting towards the rocket so that they detach in a proper manner. Okay, great. Well, let's see if we could add another fin. I don't want to worry too much about it. I mean, this rocket should be stable enough. I mean, it's not too big, it's not too heavy, and this bottom engine has pretty good thrust vectoring, so I'm not overly concerned. I mean, it's a Rhino engine, which is one of the best, in my opinion, at least for the also for the upper stages as well. So, let's run the simulation. I will be doing the launch in a later episode where I will be doing the orbital assembly, but in this one it's basically just launch testing. So, we are doing a test to see that it launches correctly, that it doesn't experience any bigger trouble, and that it does get to orbit. As simple as that. Okay, and I mean, these solid rocket boosters give a beautiful plume, so courtesy of real plume, and I'm really enjoying it, so I'm actually starting to actually more and more use boosters, rather than just liquid fuel ones that I tend to use. Okay, standard launch, a little bit more aggressive on the, I mean... Ascent profile, we are going with a steeper profile, detaching the boosters, and now going for the gravity turn. Of course, this is also accelerated, as you can see. But then again, it's pretty much standard launch, business as usual. The launcher is simple enough, so, I mean, nothing really out of the ordinary, and... I believe lots of comments I've been getting from you guys is that I don't really need 
to, for the center of lift to be behind center of mass for the rockets. And yes, this is true, and I agree with you. However, with some of the launchers that I've noticed that have very big um, cargo, well, not cargo bay, but uh, fairing, uh, when I do a little bit more aggressive, the air starts to push against the fairing and its flight characteristics make my rocket flippity flip flip. So for the launchers that I'm having a bigger um, fairing, I do tend to prefer to put the center of lift behind the center of mass because in that case my rocket will be self-stabilizing. So that's kind of my reasoning. While I do know it's not mandatory, it's a very welcome thing. So, as you can see, the top stack reaching safely 100 uh, km orbit, and it's just a matter to see how much delta V we have after circ circularization. Okay, and we are left with 900 delta V, which is, I guess, more than enough. So let's just test the detachment that it works. And yeah, our RCS is also working correctly. Just testing the deployment and everything. So, as you can see, guys, our top stack is working flawlessly. Even if I want to use a flight computer, I can use it because of the probe core. Beautiful. It's really that simple. We can open it up and we can use it. Great. Okay, let's fold it back and I think it's time to finish up this simulation for at least the top stack. And we need to start thinking about designing the launcher for the bottom part, which is a lot bigger. And uh, honestly, guys, I had lots of trouble with creating this launcher for this one, but I believe the main issue was due to uh, me putting the probe core, which is the um, probe core, I believe, from the near future one, because it's this octogirder probe core. Uh, I've put it backwards, so when the rocket was going up, it thought it was going down. I don't know if that makes sense, but anyway, and because of that, my rocket was constantly flipping. I have no idea why. I've tried everything. I thought first it was strutting that was wrong. Then I tried uh, uh, putting the center of mass behind, center of lift behind the center of mass. I've tried many different things, only to realize when I flip, once I flipped this um, probe core 180 degrees, it started working flawlessly. Whether or not it's a bug, I have no idea, but yeah. Anyway, moving onwards, let's just continue with the construction. So at some point further on, you will see me just flipping the screen and just making the final adjustments and it will work. But I just wanted to update you what happened in the meantime and I will be skipping, skipping lots of trials and failures because there was nothing really contributing to it. And when it comes to this guy, I wanted to have also the upper stage because I wanted, since this part is already big enough, I wanted to be, make a smaller stage that it would be maneuverable. I didn't want the main rocket to be also the single stack then when we, which we will need to maneuver around and do the rendezvous with. So I wanted a small stack on top that would be easier to flip around when we need to do rendezvousing. So that's my reasoning for creating an upper stage. Then let's put this uh, interstage and then we will be putting the 5 meter, the big Kahuna fuel tank. I'm also thinking of putting the Eulage motor motors. And they have also proved somewhat mm, okay, I guess, but I was using them a little bit wrongly. Okay, so trying to find the right engine. 
Okay, this gives me 2.40 thrust to weight ratio on takeoff, and we have 4,055, which is definitely not enough, so I will be attaching some side boosters, and I'm thinking two in total. And this time I won't use SRBs, but I will use the liquid ones, because I want the fuel from them to be feeding into the main stack. Okay, so two rhinos, then the fuel lines, obviously. Okay, just checking the staging, and I'm thinking I want to be putting some fins down there, and I want to be putting the big SAS unit, the 5 meter one, around here to have some control authority. So at first I was attaching these winglets and of course then they were not nearly enough to, you know, as I said, put the center of mass behind the center of, center of lift behind the center of mass. Despite my efforts and thoughts that this was what was going wrong. Also this thing, since it has like five, five engines at the bottom, it's not really good at thrust vectoring. But then again, the two rhinos that I have are good at thrust vectoring, so... Yeah. Just making sure that my posi positioning is correct. And let's run the first simulation. So, this was the first simulation run that I did. So, started to go, and as you can see, my rocket went flippity flip flip for some completely stupid reason. And that was this probe core. Later tests, I mean, I've done lots and lots of tests and then I realized it was the probe core. For some reason, completely unbeknown to me. Okay, so, j this is what you saw. This was like my almost final stage, what it looked like. So as you can see, I was attaching lots and lots of fins because I thought that was the problem. But and then at a later stage, I've just reoriented my... Uh, probe core and then in the end I have decided to add procedural all moving wing and basically just create some bigger winglets that would also make my rocket a lot lot more stable so this is one of the examples where I am showing you I want to have a self stabilizing rocket rather than a flippity one okay so, procedural dynamics mod, procedural wing. Extending this, and, and you can see as I'm building a bigger uh, wing, my center of lift is coming down. So I'm putting it further down. I'm gonna put four pieces in total. And as you can see, this moved my center of mass center of lift just behind the center of mass as I originally wanted. Beautiful. Let's run the simulation. Okay. And three, two, one, go. I almost forgot to run it at full thrust. That would have easily been a mistake. As you can see, this time the rocket is running straight and true. I have enabled aerodynamic forces overlay simply because I wanted to see, I mean, how does it behave. And as you can see, so far everything looks okay and no major forces, drag, introducing lift and all that jazz working correctly. But as you can see, lift is pushing it a little bit sideways, but my fins are still able to control it and work as intended. So I guess business as usual looks pretty fine to me. This is the first time that I've managed to get a decent ascent. Okay. All right, and then we go and we will be putting this one to orbit on this run, hopefully. I'm just making sure I point my rocket into the direction of the circularization burn, deploying the fairing, 
and as you can see we have enough monoprop and we have enough everything pretty much here 1300 delta V to circularize and we have 3000 delta V in total so we will have more than enough Okay, we did extend the communitron just to continue to maintain connection and coming to the separation and BAM! As I said, Eulage motors, I've run them a little bit wrongly, but okay. You live, you learn. Anyway, my main point is we are orbital with 1300 delta V to spare. Definitely pretty good. Only thing that I realized that I don't have on this top stack is the monoprop. So yeah, I will be running this monoprop less, I would guess. Or I'll just fix when we will be actually doing the real launch. I'll just attach the two small radial monoprop tanks to make the docking a whole lot easier. Lights are working correctly. Okay, next one. And the third one is the main axle. So this is somewhat similar to the previous one. So I actually am doing the same thing as I did. I'm just taking a new probe core directly because I didn't want this one to also go flippity flip on me. So you can see here what I did to the previous launcher to make it work correctly. That's all, folks, whether you believe it or not. Okay, time to put the fairing on this sucker. And once again, we want to be putting it, but this one does have the RCS fuel tank, as you can see. So just putting the communitron on the action group one and then And then we will be putting the solar panel probably on the group too. But okay, let's see if, oh, 3.75 meter fairing not cutting it. Well, that's a shocker. So let's take the 3.75 expanded as we always do. Okay, slightly bent inwards, slightly bent inwards, come on. Oh, and close the fairing. Pop. Okay, once again, clamshell deploy, because I really hate confetti. Three sides, I think that looks plausible. I don't want too many sides. It's just not practical. Okay, time to put the rocket underneath this bad boy. So, what do we have? I'm thinking, once again, pretty similar thing what I did to the other rocket. So, a small upper stage together with the uh, Rhino engine. It's gonna be actually pretty similar to the previous one. Then what else do we have? Then I want the SAS unit on it. Sure. Great. Then the interstage to the 5 meter one because they just look cool. The 5 meter rocket Oh, this is one tall rocket, I'll give him that. So, what else do we have? The engine, where is the engine? Hold on, this isn't, no, this is 3.75, I need a 5 meter engine. Oh, there you are. Okay. And then, this is 3,180 delta V, so I need some additional boosters, but let's put first the decoupler. Okay, this one has higher ejection force and that's that's why I want to use it. Then let's put the fuel tanks. Or maybe the boosters. Can we attach the boosters? Some that will give us a great amount of delta V. Hmm. 4.3 well that might be a little bit tricky but um, if I don't 
I think it would work. 4.3 last one, last uh, circularization I ended with like almost 1000 delta V and that was at 4.8 so this one should then end up with roughly 500 if I'm not mistaken. Let's put the procedural um, fins, four of them, somewhere around here. Let's see, center of mass, center of lift, how does it look like? A little bit like that. Oh, it's way too high. Wow. Yeah, I mean, the fairing on this sucker is huge. Let's put the SAS unit, another SAS unit. I need really something to keep this guy in control. I don't want to do, you know, get rid of the side boosters, but yeah. They just look amazing and I, I can Im imagine that they would produce enough plume. So let's see. Strut. I want to be strutting the bananas out of this one. Okay, maybe a little bit better. Come on. Yeah, maybe on the side so that this guy, the RCS thruster is not in the way. Yeah, I think it would work. Maybe from the probe core even, it's even better. Yeah, yeah, and both of them are now attached, good. So this one is strutted, this one is strutted, but I'm thinking it might be even better if I put additional fins. So let's give him some more fins. Two on the side here, and then uh, two here. I mean, what the hell? It's not doing nothing to our center of mass. I don't get it. Well, we don't want, we want thrust to weight not to be too great, but roughly if it's around 140, 150, I think it should be fine. Let's put the launch clamps and see maybe how it works. I think staging is correct, so let's run the simulation. Three, two, one, launch. Or ignition, and then launch. Boosters kicking it up, but for some reasons my fairings don't have enough authority and everything goes bananas. And then I try to maintain control of my rocket and it doesn't work. Okay. I just wanted to make sure to give it one more try if I goofed up something. Yeah, and our rocket is bending over, basically no control authority because we are running on solid fuel boosters and yeah. Bada boom. Well, at least the decoupling sequence works correctly. Okay, so I think we need to add some more fins. A little bit more power to the engines and a lot more fins. So, you we put here, you we put here, and you we put here. Let's see what our center of mass and... Ooh, I think it's too much. Some of, some of them, I think, because of the radial symmetry went wrong. So, hold on, I just need to make sure that I attach this one, and then alone, and then this one alone. Okay, yeah, now it looks better. So, I attach once again this one alone and this one alone. Okay, how do we look now? 
center of mass, center of lift. Amazing. And 4.2 delta V. Oh, we are cutting it a little bit close, aren't we? Okay, three, two, one, launch. We have cleared the tower. This time our rocket is running straight and true. I'm giving it tiny nudges just to steer it gently towards the direction of the orbital, but I'm still trying to be maintain a rather steep ascent. I don't want to be doing too much before the boosters detach. Detaching the boosters, igniting the main engine and let's check once again. We do have control over the rocket. Great! The air is here thinner so the fins should play more role than the actual fairing I'm hoping. Because they are controlled surfaces. And high enough great so let's see how much delta v we will have after we circularize one thousand six hundred for the circularization me leaving us with somewhat four hundred delta v to for the orbital maneuvers and i think that sh most of these guys should be fine i mean i'm not overly concerned Detaching the fairing. 0.ing the rocket or, or maneuver prograde. Making sure that I rearrange the staging. Okay. and igniting the engine so let's see just gently enough touching on the controls and we have additional 200 meters per second for the circularization and we are orbital, ladies and gentlemen, with 490 meters per second to circularize. Well, that's plenty. Okay. That basically means that this one is okay. So let's design the launcher for our final component. Because I'm saying final, I know I have other fuel tanks, but all of the fuel tanks could go into the same launcher. So they will follow, be following the same principles. And come on, not even you want to be going in 3.75 meter fairing? Oh, come on. Okay, closing the fairing. This is simple enough. Clamshell deployment, three pieces. Yeah, that is correct. Then let's go and look for a fuel tank. three point seventy five same thing Rhino engine great SAS unit and by this time I'm thinking that I've probably learned how the eulage motors work so I'll probably be putting them in the right way. This way I will do an interstage to the three point seventy five because I don't think I need the five meter one Where is my engine? We put this one. Decent thrust to weight. Let's put eulage motors. I'm thinking rather than here of putting them actually here so that they push us a little bit into the right direction. I'm thinking this is actually how they are supposed to be used because they make sure that your fuel is pumping in the right direction, I guess, so and kind of gravity affects it. I think this matters more into the real solar system than it does with the one that I'm playing, but still, I mean, nice to, you know, learn a little bit about him and be prepared. 
Okay, so let's see. Um, 3.4 thousand Delta V, which is definitely not enough. We want some side boosters. Because, yeah, more boosters. So let's see which ones we'll take. I'm thinking of the regular Thor ones. Where were the ones? Oh, super heavy. This might actually work. 4.666. Yeah, maybe. Certainly looks plausible. Then let's put the control surfaces. Once again going with the procedural ones. Let's put four of them. Okay, one more here and hopefully that should seal the deal. No, not really. How about if I put another two on the side boosters, maybe? Or extend this one a little bit? Hmm. Nope. Okay. Well, let me put two here. And that should hopefully seal the deal. Oh, yes, it does definitely, but. Yeah, like this. It's really interesting how much uh, do this. I'm I'm not sure if this central mass and trough lift calculation is correct, but still. Okay. And guys, I think after we launch this one, if it's successful, then we will be definitely calling this for the episode because it's a little bit longer episode. But I really wanted to show you how to design all of the launchers. Three, two, one, and ignition and lift off. We have our SRBs working as intended and we have good control authority, so it seems. Beautiful plume, as you can see as well. So far, no problems with this launcher, apart from a little bit, you know, shakiness, but yeah, that's something I can live with. Detaching the side boosters with clearly overpowered decouplers. So, just now making, you know, well, not kind of finalizing the gravity turn and Pointing the rocket in the right direction, simply put. And then I've put the same group on the Eulage motors as I did on the decouplers, because I thought it would be relevant. Okay, let's just make sure that we make a maneuver node to circularize. De let's deploy the fairing. This is actually a pretty simple enough launcher, so... Should be pretty straightforward. 1200 Delta V to circularize and 2200 in total. That would be leaving us with 1000 Delta V. Which I guess is more than enough to actually perform the orbital rendezvous dance and all that jazz. Okay, let's just check the rest of the procedure that it's fine. And five, four, three, two, one, and let's kick the gas. This time I'm deliberately not kicking the main engine, so let's kick the coupler right about now. And beautiful execution of the Eulage motors. I think I will be using them more of them. I actually like how they work. And we are orbital and we have 1000 Delta V for the orbital maneuvering shenanigans. Well, that's pretty much it. Thank you very much for watching. This is Gromfork signing off.